Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Chaos TV's presentation of the Wii Play Invitational Semi-Finals. We're into game number two between the Red and SK, and after a dominant performance in game number one, SK Gaming, man, they're looking to close this one out in three, but can the Red take it to, uh, or at least tie things up with a win here in game number two? It's very, very difficult for you, for them to come back because that last game really, really showed SK strength. They were dominant, honestly, throughout. It wasn't as obvious early on, and it may be that the Red just need to pick a few stronger early on lanes. But last game, mid lane, for instance, Oriana being outfarmed by Nidalee pre-6, that is not something you really want to deal with. Renekton falling behind early, uh, sorry, Shen falling behind to Renekton early on, not a good sign, and that is really, really a uh, difficult kind of thing to deal with, but we have, they are a well-known team, they do have a tendency to bounce back fairly strongly, but it does seem like this time Lucian is going to be first picked by SK. Alright, it's like, which team gets the first pick, Lucian? This time around, it is SK Gaming, and they actually went with the Caitlyn pick uh, in the last game, and uh, we were talking about it a little bit during the break. Uh, Sivir is a champion that we see almost picked and banned every single game in North America. It's even becoming really popular in Korea as well, and don't really see that too much in EU West games, so we'll have to see if that's going to be the pick here for the Red. I don't think it's quite caught on just yet, but with that Lucian, Lucian being taken away, it's kind of, well, now that you've taken Lucian, what's the other AD carry that you go for? Yeah, it is actually something where I honestly hear, and I'm going to incite a lot of wrath and, you know, betraying the cause as it were, but um, I honestly feel like EU is a little bit behind in rating Sivir strongly. I believe Caronte did run it at one point during the promotional qualifiers, but... Uh, it didn't actually work out for them. Caronte were not doing too well that tournament though, so maybe that's just an unfortunate showing for a good champion. But Sivia is very, very strong at the moment, and let's face it here, the red could potentially pick that up. It would also work very, very well in a two-on-one lane, but there are several other options open for them as an AD carry. They have secured themselves the Annie as the support, which is a very, very powerful, powerful choice as well, so... It does seem like uh, they're getting quite a few of the same picks coming out though. Lucian, Renekton, Annie and Nidalee have all been seen in previous games, although if Svenskeren were to run Zin Zhao, that would surprise me. Not the most common champion these days, but definitely has some strengths. Well, in game number one, the red banned out uh, Olaf, Evelyn, and Elise, all versus Svenskeren. This time around, they they don't want to see his Lee Sin again, so they're going to ban out Lee, Evelyn, and Elise but leave Olaf up. So interesting to see Svenskeren going with the Xinjiao pick instead of the Olaf that was banned against him in game number one. Yes, indeed. And I'm hoping my voice isn't lagging because I did just notice Steam has started automatically downloading something. Um, but right now, it does actually look like we... Okay, so fine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am right now uh, casting from the stream, so I'm a little bit behind at the moment, but... Fyrees is currently hovering over Singed, which would seem, typically, to be a nonsensical pick if you already have Renekton. Most likely he's just trolling us, he does uh, sometimes wave around the Teemo, but doesn't lock it in. Um, but there is always that potential to try and do something funky, like a Renekton mid. A uh, bit risky to do that if you don't know what you're up against, but they don't really usually want to be running Renekton against Rengar. That isn't a lane that works out too well. However, Orianna, certainly one of they will pay's champions, but last game didn't really work out as well as it could have done. Although it seems that SK were confident that they wouldn't have Nidalee picked against them, because they, uh, most likely, they will play is not too confident on that champion. They will pay, not what they pay. <laughs> there we go, yes, they will pay... They will play either way. Um, bottom lane is it hasn't been locked in yet for the red. They're still looking for that AD carry pick, and they're actually saving the AD pick for last, which is interesting because normally you think of the duo lanes as somewhat interchangeable. Not exactly, but uh, more often than not, you'll see mid and top counter picked with the last pick on the purple side. But for right now, they're actually waiting on that AD carry pick, and then. For SK, what are they going to grab for mid and support? Look like they're hovering over Ari and a uh, and a Thresh. Uh, you actually saw I just seized. He had the Nidalee pick available. Worked out really well for him in game number one, but 
Switching it up to an Ari versus the Oriana now, and a Thresh for Nif down in the bottom lane with Candy Panda now on Lucian. Okay, so SK this game are going for much less of a poke and disengage style. They have much, much more aggressive team composition here, which could work against them, given that the red has a very, very powerful all-in 5 versus 5. But even though they're not going to be playing... They will be playing more aggressive than they did last game. They still have a lot of capacity to split push. They still have Rengar. They still have Xin Zhao, who assists extremely well in pushing down towers and roaming around to join up with his team, setting up ganks that way. So this game, SK still not looking to 5-on-5 five five straight up, but I think they will be playing a bit more... A bit more like they will push up, then they will try and abuse that map pressure in order to get a little bit... a couple of picks here or there. <laughs> They have picked a slightly weak team in terms of straight up lane pushing, but they can defend themselves decently well under tower and clearing out waves. All right, I like the, the somewhat of a pick comp there from SK. Every single member of the team, with the exception of Lucian, has something that yeah, you can use to initiate the fight, catch somebody out, uh, whether it's the empowered uh, Bolo from Freddy 1 2 2's Rengar, uh, just the audacious charge, uh, charm, and then, of course, the death sentence there from Nif. Uh, so a lot of different ways you can pick somebody off there for SK, but if you look back at the red, once again, they're just running that big AoE team fight wombo combo. You got the anti stuff. Uh, into Oriana ultimate. This time there's no Vi to deliver the Oriana ball, but that's why you're going to go with the Jarvan jungle. Don't see that much Jarvan play anymore, but it's going to be nice to see that there from the red. Let's we'll see how they stack up against SK as we hop into the three minute spectator delay. We're going to head off to a quick commercial break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, the red looked even the score versus SK Gaming in game number two, the best of five semifinals, the We Play Invitationals here on Chaos TV.
Hello, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, we are underway, we play Invitational Semi-Finals The Red versus SK Gaming, and this is the second game, Freddy there being spotted out, Rapid, how are you doing? I'm doing great, uh, Spunnington, it's nice to be joined back together once again here on Chaos TV's uh, We Play Invitational, yeah, here we go, I, I, I think, the, the, alright, okay, sorry, I was a little bit slow loading in, but you know what, it's good to be here, um, I, I want to say SK, going in with this lineup, at least, it's nice to see sort of a linebacker. Uh, if, if you're used to American football, this is the way it sets up every time. You're in Europe now. <laughs> I, I know, I'm not allowed to reference American football, but if uh, for the time being, it's nice to see Freddy just getting a little bit far up there. Now in a 1v2, I'm not sure. He's, uh, I think he's bit off a little bit more than he can chew right there, but <laughs> we'll drop down a trinket ward, immediately gets killed. That's pretty valuable at this stage of the game. I mean, I... Cuts down the vision, means they have got that wasted resource that will take a while to come back up. But it does look like we are going to see a 2v1 swap up this time. SK heading in for the top lane, putting Lucian Thresh up against the Neptun. Rengar going to be in the bottom lane, 1v2ing himself. And I've got to say, actually, it feels to me like this time SK are swapping up in prediction of a 2v1 that hasn't actually happened. Now usually you'll see uh, when a top when a solo laner knows that he's going into a 1v2, he'll actually just follow the jungler around in his own jungle and pick up some XP from you know big camps and then doing like a small camp right after uh, the buff. But that's actually not the choice here uh, for Freddy. He had the option to stick around, but is just gonna get denied CS and experience down here in the bottom lane. Not willing to. Uh, deny the destroyer who is Spenskrin by the way in case you guys are just now joining us uh any cs just yet so for the time being uh we do have 2v1s and i guess we should probably ask you spuddington who do you think is gonna fare better in these 1v2s uh you think uh either renekton or rengar well traditionally you would expect rengar to come out a little bit worse he's not terrible in a two-on-one he can sustain himself decently using his empowered w but compared to renekton he has a little bit less capacity to set up ganks for his jungler and a little bit less wave clear which generally means he's in a bit of trouble but now he's actually in a lot of trouble because if you notice javan is doing for going for the three minute 20 timing gank oh it's this same could thing be dangerous Spencer top yeah Spencer is going in Underneath the turret, there's a cannon minion taking up the turret. Here we go, we're getting the play backwards. Nif's gonna take up the turret. Actually switches aggro to Candy Panda, but he gets first blood underneath the turret. Taken out for Reese, bottom lane. We saw they attempted to dive, but Freddy manages to come out alive. And action across the map, but the first blood goes to SK. And it was just a very nice play by Freddy in the bottom lane that kept him alive. Uh, he just essentially stood perfectly still. Waited for Jarvan to go in first, dodged the flag and drag, and that meant he could go for the Ignite, which forced Jarvan to back out, and Nixar and Demonko were a little bit too far away to punish Freddy as they would have liked, meaning he was able to live, and his counterpart in the top lane has ended up very, very dead. Freddy, though, very low HP. Does have a Dorian's shield, so a lot of regen from that, but should need some lane relief here in just a minute. So, well, I'm not sure exactly why Spencer is spending too much time up top lane. I don't think Nip and Candy Panda really need a ton of help to take that turret down, but it's the first turn of the game. Down at 4 minutes and 30 seconds for SK. Yeah, it's just an extremely fast tower push they're running right now. That's a very, very big windfall for them at this stage of the game. That much bonus gold spread between those three people is very, very significant. Their bottom tower isn't even something they need to worry about. So if they can actually get a second dive on Re Renekton, they could keep shoving. Even if they can't, they can walk up to the tower and Renekton Jarvan will not be able to burst them down quite quickly enough to force them off. Forces the two men up top. Yeah, that's gonna be that uh, Jarvan has to come up there, drops the standard just to clear out the wave. Death sentence though grabs in on it to Jarvan, played backwards, takes him down, takes out about a third of his hit points, and wave cleared out. We'll keep that top turret alive, but down to about half hit points. And now it's the same thing we saw in game number one, but a little bit of a different style as Svenskren is just really making that upper jungle his own, taking it away from the red. 
Yeah, and they're very, very happy to keep doing that right now. Freddy is in the bottom lane. He's going to have to recall. They can send their dual lane down there now and get Sven Skeren back in there to start pushing again. Rengar is obviously a little bit behind, but he's level 5 to Renekton's 3. Fyries is going to have to freeze up top or risk ending up in a one-on-one -on -one that he can't win against Rengar, which is very, very risky on his part. So at the moment... Seems like SK are taking control once again in the early objective. Very similar start to the game as uh, we saw in game number one. Took a little bit longer to take down the turret, but hey, it's six minutes in. There's already uh, about a 1,000 gold lead here for SK. Now, they're going to keep pushing down that bottom lane. It's going to be the duo lanes finally meeting each other down there. But uh, with that early kill, giving a BF sword over to Candy Panda, he's going to be miles ahead of Nyxar in damage. I mean, with the Sheen, Nyxar should be able to out-trade in first same time you don't really out trade a Lucian in lane yeah it's always a little bit difficult but Ezreal if he can be landing the Qs he will actually out trade most AD carries early on it's one of those strange things though because it's very powerful if he can land it if he cannot though it is absolutely worthless comparable damage though with the Sheen proc on his Q to an actual piercing light from Lucian but a lot more mana sustain on that and a shorter cooldown to boot. So, he's going to be going into the game. Yeah, a nice knock up there. Andre Faris is uh, making his way to the wall. We'll flash over and away. But there's actually the flash from Freddy trying to get the Bolo. Double flashes here. SK are not fans of Faris. There's the last auto attack for the kill as uh, Svenskeren will take him down. Meanwhile, Jarvan's forced away from that bottom lane. Very, very low hit points. We'll do the white as uh, he disengages. Death sentence though on it. Demago play backwards. A lot of damage to be traded back away. Nip's gonna walk forward and die, and there's one kill already. Now Candy Panda very low on mana, trying to trade some damage back over to Nixar, but Demago actually positioning more aggressively. Candy's gonna have to back off, and that is a one for zero exchange in the bottom lane, but a one for one overall. Little bit greedy there, seeing the opportunity to hook Demonko and get some free poke. Uh, poke? Poke. N Nif stuck around for a little bit too long, and as a result, got punished. Ezreal can always close up pretty quickly, which is a very, very nice thing to happen, because before that happened, they had just essentially turned another situation that was parallel between both their, their bottom and the enemy's top in their favor again, with them getting the kill and their opponents not. As it happens, it's essentially a one for one across the map. Candy Panda though is still pretty low, but with the Targon's Brace there on to Nif, it should heal him up relatively well. So I'll have to see if he can get those three charges off uh, to give a little bit of extra sustain there to Candy Panda and a little bit of extra gold there as well. So at least for the time being, top lane very well in favor of Freddy. Bottom lane, we see some weaknesses there, especially with Nif dying first in, um, in game number one and game number two as well. Not, not for first blood, but dying down there in the bottom lane. So Nixar and Demonko, really impressive. And like we said, the burst there is the burst is there for Ezreal. He just needs Annie to set that up for him. Again, we're gonna have the junglers going at it as uh, Svenskeren, level advantage down there, will get there on it to Jarvan. Misses the standard away. Freddy, thrill of the hunts down, looking to engage onto Demonko, but actually will turn things back around to his lane opponent there in Faris. Yeah, and this is actually buying time now for Svenskeren to steal the red, but he has been called, they're gonna go for it. Yes, and the red actually uh, losing the red, and there's gonna be the ult away. Will it be enough? Oh, it's a trinket ward over the wall. Audacious charge the golems, but uh, the damage from golems and the ignite will be able to take Svenskeren down. So successful defense of the jungle, and now the red with the red launching Faris. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate there for SK, and now Freddy has stuck around for a long, long time. Renekton has the red buff, as you mentioned, and can trade fairly well with his sustain. No ultimate on Rengar, they're gonna go for this one. Freddy in a little bit of trouble, ignites down, Faris will die from that ignite, last tick to take him out. That's actually gonna give red buff now over to Freddy. So, uh, some crazy buff transfers, I think it started down on Svenskeren, went over to Faris, now it's on Freddy. He's actually pretty low, but I don't think Demonka can kill him just yet, so for the time being, Freddy looking very strong in the top lane. And that was just ballsiness there by Freddy, he knew he could fight that 2 on 1, but in mid lane hits with Jesse. Mid. Yeah, Jesse's getting pulled underneath the turret, will make his way back out there with those charges of Spirit Rush, but at the same time, he will pay, putting Jesse's in a really bad position. 
Yeah, it's going in, and there's gonna be, oh, immediately Annie just exploding. Demonko going down, there is the audacious charge going in. Will Spencer try to trade this back? There's a barrier down. Will it be enough to keep Nixar alive? Couple more auto attacks. It's the empowered play from Nif to grab the kill on to Nixar. Now three men strong. The bottom lane push for SK Sh could result in the turret, but it looks like they're backing off for Dragon. Yeah, but that Dragon is actually a little bit risky right now. Jarvan is heading down towards that area. Oriana is going to be pushed up against her tower, so that's going to be difficult, but they are getting quite low here, and Candy Panda can't really force Gamalke away very easily. I mean, the disengage box down. Darwin will use the standard combo to get away. Still in the area, though, can smite this away, but should look to get given over to the Destroyer, who is Fenskrin. So uh, that's going to be another dragon there for SK, or the first dragon, rather, of the game going their way. First turret, first dragon, three kill advantage, and up to a 3,000 or 2,000 gold lead already in 11 minutes. Nice hook there on Jarvan, making sure he couldn't do anything about that dragon there. And he gets forced away, gets forced to go back, but does give this Ezreal Annie combo a little bit of time now to move towards the bottom lane. And it doesn't look like Svenskeren has any intention of trying to defend that tower, and they might well lose it for this. Push is very strong, and yeah, there's actually extra attack speed onto uh, Demonko there with the Essence Flux. That's going to be bottom turret, especially with the Sheen auto attacks coming out from Nyxar. So, one to one in turrets now. Red starting to even things back up, but Candy Panda has a Bloodthirster completed, as well as about a 20 CS lead over uh, Freeze. So that's about 14 CS, so let's not, let's not get things out of hand here. But with that Bloodthirster in lane, just going to give him so much sustain and damage that Nyxar and Demonko are going to have to play this one very carefully. Yeah, there is a definite advantage across the board to SK. Oh no, the mid lane though is actually doing pretty well, but has gone for a very late game, or at least one. He's going to go for a very delayed power spike from Catalyst and Tier. Not a lot of damage right now. Very, very strong late game. We'll have even more mana uh, ooh, than you would ever expect from Moriana, but just not going to be strong when they need her to be because right now the other two lanes are falling a long long way behind renekton cannot fight rengar one and one and you can see right now the three man and bot go for the dot yeah nip actually just taking up the turn making sure the rest of his team is safe takes it up a little bit too long it almost goes down but there's gonna be the culling that come out nickstar gets called and there's gonna be one kill. Will they find a second one? Audacious Sharks force the flash there out from Jarvan. Taking up the turn is Svenskrin. Mm. Gonna drop the dunk there. Svenskrin's down, but it's a double kill. Candy Panda, he's calling Mandy Panda after that. Getting in for the dive, the double kill, and overall four. Zero and two, an incredibly strong bottom lane for SK. Increasing that goal difference between them again. And it means Jarvan isn't able to relieve the pressure on top lane. Freddy is eroding that top tower. You can see it's gone down now to, what, uh, can't be over 500 health at that point. So, very, very unfortunate. And the mid lane as well. Go for the dive. Just sees getting in there. Drops a lot of damage as well as the DFG and Ignite on a They Will Pay, who does not actually pay. Maybe gets a discount on the toll. I'm not sure, but just sees dive unsuccessful. And uh, you can see not even the command shockwave. There's a little bit of an outplay opportunity. Anytime you dive an Orianna, you're going to have to worry about the command shockwave, but it didn't actually use it at all. So, not actually worried about that. You can take down half hit points. Yeah, he did force the barrier though, but Freddy now is actually trying to 1v2. <laughs> I'm not sure why Freddy is down there in between the turrets. He's just harassing Jarvan out of his own jungle. It's like, this is where you can't quite get past. They will pay, takes a little bit of damage, shields himself up with a command protect. And now a thrill of the hunt coming in from behind. Freddy's gonna dive this turret and hopefully have some follow-up. Doesn't even need it. We'll take the lantern back out. Doesn't even need the lantern. It's gonna be a dark passageway for the safety. And the middle turret going down. All three outer turrets taken down now for SK. And you can just see the level of coordination. There is no way Freddy would have gone for that play if he hadn't known both where the enemies were and where his own team was in relation. He had that dark passage waiting for him. And now Svenskeren is pushing out that uh, red... He's killing that red buff, taking that away. And the red, the red, they just don't know whether SK are now going to go for some kind of aggressive play on that mid lane. They know Lucian is bot. They know that they've got several guys missing though. So... It gives SK a free opportunity to go back because it's a little bit dangerous for anyone on the red to advance outwards a long way. Candy Panda pushing out the bottom lane. He may go back after that and just look to pick up another item or so. 
About a 5,000 gold lead, uh, almost 6,000 now as uh, Jasiz grabs a blue and heads back towards that middle lane. They will pay does not have a blue buff and with those extra cooldowns, uh, yeah, Jasiz all of his moves back up again, including that Deathfire Grasp. He's got death on his mind and he's pushing down that middle lane looking to find out they will pay. He's gonna try to get back in the lane, but if he takes that short route, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, Jesse's backs on off for now. Doesn't quite know where Jarvan is, but uh, getting scouted out there is Nif and Candy Panda just roaming through the jungle. Looking to put a lot of pressure mid. There's the initiation command. Shockwave hits Jesse's and Nif, but a double knockup as well. They will pay, does pay with his life. Death sentence grabs Jarvan, pulls it back in. It's a double for Nif, a triple, or a double for Candy Panda. Triple kill at the end of that, and Candy just grabbing all the kills. Now, Mr. Timbers going in. Shoot Shot Barrage will miss on a Nif. He stays alive. Legendary Candy Panda 8 0 2. Candy's going in for one more, leaves it up to Freddy. And that's the ace. The red calling GG at the 16 minute mark is a devastating performance here from Candy Panda and really just the entire SK crew pushing up the middle lane, taking the second turret. SK this game have just always been one step ahead. You saw the kind of engages in turn there. You saw the first couple of guys on the red going in because they thought they had the numbers advantage. Then you suddenly had several guys coming out, but in turn, an attempted engage here from uh, the red, but I, they just can't get that. They're too hard to pin down right now. So SK right there, Essentially baiting in the red multiple times to go for an engage that they couldn't win and simultaneously taking out objectives. Really, really good stuff from them. Uh, Freddy has actually aggroed the goal. Freddy's going on and they will pay. He's not in danger and the, really the new way to play Rengar is not as like a first assassin like you used to see him played, but which has a super tank that just wears you down. Sunfire Cape dishing out a lot of magic damage and so is Battle Roar. You almost want to build magic resistance against Rengar just since it's such a huge part of his kit, but now it's going to be they will pay <laughs> Nixar and Faris all trying to chase Freddy down. Can they find the damage down onto him? Get the ball out there. Fly Where's the flash out? Demako is even coming in there. Oh. Freddy jumps back to the ward accidentally. There's the stun, the damage down. They will pay, trying to pay. Command Shockwave goes down. Freddy oh. takes the lantern out. Freddy's alive. Now Nixar trying to go down there. Freddy on the hunt. He's looking to jump back in. Jumps onto Faris, heals himself back up with the empowered battle roar. Could go down, but a death sentence lands onto Faris. Freddy's still alive. Rest in peace, four members of the red and my vocal cords. So if you want to count that as an ace, I'm not sure. But oh my word, Freddy, knowing his, the limits of his champion just so well. SK Gaming looking so good right now. Yeah, that was just incredible damage juggling there. Freddy knew he could stay in there. I do genuinely think that was a mistake to kick on the ward, but he jumped in and was able to survive it thanks to, as you mentioned, that super tank build that we see so often. And oh, another hook land. And it's perfectly landed there. Mr. Tibbers will usher the rest of them away. <laughs> oh, the troll. <laughs> Yeah, Svenskrin almost killed Freddy there by taking the lantern and not allowing Freddy to disengage. Now Demako very low, Candy Panda coming in from the side. There's the Ardent Blaze. Will we have the Relentless Pursuit in there? Death Sentence Prediction there on a Nixer. Candy Panda now legendary at 9, 0, and 3. Top inhibitor looking to go down. Could be the first inhibitor of the game. It just seems it's just made that bottom lane his own. Oh, Ardent Blaze misses under They Will Pay. Oriana stays alive for another day. The Culling coming out. Nip Candy Panda gonna have to watch out for themselves up there. First inhibitor will fall in the top lane, but meanwhile, Mr. Jesse's pushing down that bottom lane, has taken the turret, will take the inhibitor. Nobody wants to go there and make credits. Yeah, Jesse's doesn't really been doing very much except just pushing down, but going for Demonko now, that is just an insta-gib right there. SK right now, uh, you know, That's 16k good, the spectator. Whatever happened there in the mid lane, I'm not sure if we caught that, but that, I, okay, shenaniganry, uh, Svensker and letting Freddy fight his own battle, now thrill of the hunt, Freddy's going in, you cannot stop this guy, looking for the engage on it, they will pay, oh. the shockwave, just in fear, there's gonna be the, the taunt to land as well, charm. Hits from just season. and there is the kill on it. They will pay. 20 minute mark achieved. 4 to 1 surrender. Both the red go down 2 0. But it's best of five. They still have a chance to come back from this. And we will be into game three to see if the red can bring it back.
from a 2-0 deficit versus the SK. We'll be back with Game 3 in the uh, We Play Invitational Semifinals here on Chaos TV.